In a previous video, I modeled the hub of a small desk fan that I want to fit with the toroidal propeller. Now I need to turn that model into a cutting tool I can use in FreeCAD to make a propeller that fits the hub. Since I'm going to be 3D printing the propeller, I will add a suitable clearance into the cut tool. Without that, the part would have to be machined with crazy precision. You may have seen videos of high-precision machining where a perfect insert slides into an opening and you can't even see a seam once it's in place. That's not going to happen here with 3D printing. It's quite an accomplishment even with a high-end CNC. Since the propeller will be held on with a screw and there will be alignment pins to keep it from slipping, we want a zero interference fit. A little too loose will be better than a little too tight. First I'll load a copy of the modeled fan hub. Before I change anything, I'll save it as fan hub cut tool. I have to think a little backwards here. I'm modeling solid geometry that will ultimately become negative geometry in the final part. I'll start by simplifying. The chamfer on the pins is not needed for a cutting tool, so delete that. I want the cutout to simply accommodate the whole mounting ring. Having any part go into the ring is just asking for a fitting problem and gives us nothing in return. So I can delete the alignment pen supports. Now I'll enlarge the mounting ring by 0.4 millimeters to give it an easy clearance. I'll select the binder for the mounting ring and set the offset to zero. The objective is to change it to a solid disc to cut a socket into the propeller hub. Now I'll widen the alignment pins to 3.26 millimeters. That's a total clearance of 0.4 millimeters in the cutout. It's important to note that we do not want to just scale everything up to make a cutting tool. The spacing between the pin cutouts needs to be the same as the hub itself. It just needs slightly larger holes. In retrospect, that seems obvious, but I've seen the mistake made more than once. Now I'll lengthen the extrusion to 15 millimeters. The height isn't about precision. I just want it tall enough to make sure to put holes completely through the propeller hub this will be used on. Next up is the screw post. We don't need the post itself since it's completely inside the mounting ring but the propeller does need to have a through hole for the mounting screw. Since we have alignment pins, there's no need for this to closely hug the screw threads, and having the threads actually cut into it would be counterproductive. But I don't want it too big since the head of the screw will need some contact area for a good hole. I'll open the sketch and click View section so I can see it. The outer circle for the post can go. I'm changing this from a post with a hole in it to a protruding cylinder to cut the through hole. I measured the threads on the screw at a little under 3 millimeters, and the head of the screw is about 5.5 millimeters. So I'll make the through hole 3.4 millimeters in diameter. I'll make the extrusion 15 millimeters to match the alignment holes. One last thing I want to work on the revolve. Because the hub protrudes halfway into the fan cage around the fan blade, the hub of a replacement propeller may need to slip over part of it to make everything fit. This means I need to increase the radius of the revolve enough to allow for it. I'll add 0.2 millimeters to the radius, which will add 0.4 millimeters to the hub diameter when it revolves. The mounting ring is worth a revisit. The original fan blade rests entirely on the mounting ring and is held on with the screw. I decided against extending the ring in the cutting tool so the new blade will also rest primarily on the ring. I may even need to shorten it a bit so it will cut less deep into the toroidal hub and allow more clearance with the shoulder of the hub. Unless a test fit shows that to be needed, I'll just leave it at 2.5 millimeters. Now to do a test fit. I'm just going to create a small cylinder and use the tool on it to make a blank hub. Then I can print it and see how it fits. I've loaded the model of the tool. First I'll select the revolve, mounting ring, screw post, and alignment pins, 
Click on Fuse and make it all one piece. Now I want to align it better for cutting. Currently the bottom of the revolve is on the XY plane. Recalling from the revolve sketch, the outer vertical part up to the rounded shoulder is 14.25 millimeters. So I'll set its position to Z equals negative 14.25 millimeters to bring the shoulder down to the XY plane. Now create a primitive cylinder and select it. Since the revolve is 21.2 millimeters in radius, I'll set the radius of the cylinder to 22 millimeters. I'll try a height of 8 millimeters. With the cylinder still selected, tab to the view pane and set the transparency to 50%. We can see that the cut tool sits neatly inside with the cutting cylinders for the mounting and alignment holes going all the way through. Select the cylinder, then the tool, then cut. If all has gone well, this leaves us with a test part that will mount neatly on the fan. Select the cut and export it as a step file. I'll call it test2.step. I'll just gloss over this quickly. I loaded test2.step into Prusa Slicer 2.6.0-alpha5. If I print it upside down, no supports are needed. I want 40% infill. It looks like 12 cents worth of plastic to test this, so not bad at all. Then I fired up the Ender 3 and printed it in Amazon Basics Black PETG. The through-hole clearance looks good. The holes for the alignment pins are a perfect fit. In a future video, I'll use this tool to make an actual test toroidal blade for my fan and see how it does. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.